Full disclosure, anyone who claims to accurately predict the future outcome of a new emerging technology is merely engaging in subjective speculation. That's all any of us can do, and that's all I can do. Nobody possesses absolute knowledge of what lies ahead, and anyone who acts like they do is just blowing smoke at you. Hello, this is TJR. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. If not, welcome back. Uh, lately, I have been getting asked uh, what I think about AI, artificial intelligence, and its impact on music and the music industry. But as I ponder this question, I also have to ask myself, how will it impact art, cinema, and literature as well? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that it already is. And now it's time for a clickbait question. Will AI destroy the music industry or will it destroy music? One thing is for sure, things will never be the same. But then again, were they ever? Part one, fake Drake. In April, 2023, an anonymous producer under the name of Ghostwriter977 posted an AI-generated deepfake track of Drake and The Weeknd entitled Heart on My Sleeve. It started going viral with some early internet reactions stating it was as good as, if not better, than the artist it was faking. Now, since I don't understand the appeal of Drake, I'm probably no judge as to what a good Drake deepfake track should sound like. But apparently, this track was good enough to scare Universal Music Group into demanding that it be taken down. Now, I think that part of the reason for a lot of the, how shall I say, hysteria that broke out on the internet over this track is due to the assumption that this track might have been created solely by AI. I don't think enough people were asking themselves what was Ghostwriter 977's process in creating this track when they listened to it. Was this track completely written and recorded by AI, or did a human being guide it? And if so, how much of that process was human, and how much of it was AI? One YouTube channel, Aiken Kenway forward slash Trapmasters, made a demonstration video where he recreated the exact same track. He performed the piano parts and the vocals himself, and he used samples to create the rest. The use of AI came in when he employed an AI conversion generator to make his vocals sound like Drake. Of course, this doesn't answer the question of how the lyrics were created. Did Ghostwriter 977 write the lyrics himself or did he use AI or was it a combination of both? Now, another YouTube channel, Kyle Beats, created his own unique original fake Drake track. He used an AI lyric generator to create the lyrics, then used available music loop libraries to create the track. He recorded the vocals himself and, like Aiken Kenway, used an AI conversion generator to transform his vocals. Now, before I go any further, let me say a few words about the lyric generator. I visited the same lyrics generator that he used online, and I have to admit it's wicked simple. I typed in a few topics and it spit out some lyrics based on those topics that rhymed. But I should add that afterwards, Kyle Beats then employed his own critical eye to rewrite portions of those lyrics that he felt were not strong enough or Drake sounding enough. Now, the real kicker came through as he neared the end of his process of creating the track. He took his final stereo recorded master and put it in a conversion generator that then tweaked and upgraded the production quality of his audio so that it sounded like a fully produced track, which made not just the vocals, but every other aspect of the audio that he had created sound more like a Drake recording. If you watch his original video, you will find that even he was pretty astounded by what he was able to do. 
Now, side note, watching this video, it's clear to me that both these YouTube creators understand and get the music of Drake in a way that I don't. They have both heard enough of Drake to know what does and doesn't sound like the artists. Personally, I wouldn't feel qualified to create a fake Drake track, but I do feel that I have studied the music of, say, the Beatles well enough to know if I've created a good fake Beatles track or not. Getting back to fake Drake. While we don't know what the exact process was for the creator of Heart on My Sleeve, I am betting that it falls somewhere within the realm of these two video demonstrations and that the main contribution of AI was used in converting the vocals to sound like the artist and to probably help the write the lyrics to some degree, but with a very high likelihood of human rewriting as well. Most importantly is the understanding that a human being had to guide this and figure out what worked and what didn't. So far, it would appear that what we have here with this fake Drake track is a human being using AI as a tool versus AI creating art. And I think that a lot of the fear that people express when they hear about AI creating a music track like this one or like the upcoming Beatles track that I talked about in my last video that Paul McCartney is working on is that artificial intelligence will begin to replace humans and human creativity. Update, as of the editing of this video, Sean Ono Lennon stated on Twitter that AI is just being used to denoise a vocal track. So do we have anything to really worry about? Will AI replace humans? Is it even possible that artificial intelligence could ever meet or even exceed human creativity? Well, of course it's possible. Part two, the Beatles reunited. Not too long after the release and takedown of Heart on My Sleeve, the internet saw the release of The Beatles, Grow Old With Me. Grow Old With Me was originally a posthumously released John Lennon demo. It was recorded on a cassette tape in his bedroom with a piano and rhythm box. YouTube creator Day Limbs used AI to reimagine it as a song recorded and performed by the Beatles. As of the making of this video, this deep fake version of the Beatles grows more startling each time I hear it. Yes, a human being guided all of this. And yes, this was a track that was already written by John Lennon years ago. But when you consider that we are still in the infancy stages of this technology, the possibilities are already mind boggling. This same creator also reimagined Paul McCartney's 2013 track, New, from the album of the same name, to now feature a guest appearance by John Lennon. And while he was at it, he also had McCartney's voice re-engineered so that it sounded like it was the young McCartney scene versus the older McCartney scene. Now, while he is still anonymous, Day Limbs has admitted that he is a professional working in the music industry and that a few record labels have reached out to him and that he hopes to be doing more AI work for them in an official capacity. Now, if Apple Records and Universal Music Group are smart, they will take him under their wing if they haven't already, because the possibilities are endless. Think of the endless possibilities of imaginary team-ups between artists that never could have happened. Elvis Presley performing with Jim Morrison and The Doors. And Louis Armstrong and Jimi Hendrix teaming up wouldn't be just a gag from a Bill and Ted movie anymore. Of course, at the end of the day, these are just parlor tricks. They're a cool novelty, but once the novelty wears off, what are you left with? AI might be able to make Paul McCartney younger, but it's never going to be able to compose an original song that not only captures the sound of a band like the Beatles, but also embodies their distinct creative brilliance. Now, the problem with what I just said is that once you say this, it's only a matter of time before we make the impossible possible. An AI-generated track that goes beyond merely imitating a style like the Beatles and instead presents something that sounds like a genuine lost Beatles track. Something that evokes a sense of authenticity and wonder. Now, as impossible as that might sound, I can't help but think of the remarkable results that we are already seeing 
with AI in the realm of art. Platforms such as DALI and Midjourney are already empowering individuals who have no previous art experience with the ability to generate breathtaking artwork within seconds, and all done by utilizing text prompts. I have seen the results myself, and for every misfire, there are results that are absolutely captivating. And again, we are just in the infancy stages of this technology. Sure, an experienced musician like myself could use AI as a tool to enhance their already existing skills and also to speed up their workflow. I could see using AI to help me consider different chord progressions or audio options on a song I'm working on. I could see where AI could take a musical idea I have created and give me numerous musical variations on it, allowing me to either create multiple versions of the same song or write various different songs based on the same musical ideas and themes. I know this is possible because I have already done this on my own using just my own skills and creativity. The difference will be that AI will help me do it faster and will present me with options that I might not have considered. But if AI can already help someone with no art training or skill create captivating artwork using just text prompts, I don't see why it won't be able to, at some point, help a person with no musical education or skills create music in the same way. I can picture a music audio generator and feeding in a prompt like this. Compose a song that is two minutes and 56 seconds long in the vein of the Beatles' magical mystery tour, Psychedelic Period, sung by John Lennon with George Harrison and Paul McCartney singing backup vocals. The instrumentation will be John on guitar, Paul on bass and lead guitar, Ringo on drums, and George Harrison on tambora with acoustic guitar. There will also be some incidental strings arranged by George Martin. The song will be entitled The Self, and the lyrics will reflect on the differences between Eastern and Western philosophy of the self. Make the lyrics 20% literal and 80% abstract. The track will open sounding very minimalist and intimate, just acoustic guitar and vocal, and it will slowly build, but with an increasing intensity as the other instruments join in. The track will reach a crescendo and then will end with the last line of lyric sung a cappella. In the same way that software like Logic Pro and Pro Tools democratized who could make a professional sounding recording, I think that AI could democratize who can create and realize art, and this includes music too. And with enough people using and experimenting with it, I can see a world where AI art and music becomes its own genre. And the very best within that genre will be created by those who do the best job at building, creating, and modifying their text prompts. After that, there are countless existing software tools and plugins that could be used to tweak what you have created in order to personalize it further if you want to do this. And if it's good, it's good. And if an AI created original song elicits an emotional response from the listener, it then becomes legitimate too. So what about movies? That's safe from all of this, right? Well, remember those AI art generators I was talking about? For a while there, I was checking out YouTube videos from an AI creator who created AI art that reimagined Marvel and DC movies as if they were made in the 1920s. These videos were just still images at first, but then I finally found one that featured animation and movement. Now, AI is already being used professionally in animation, and so it occurred to me that given time, we all might have the ability to create almost anything, including our own cinematic masterpiece. I know this all sounds miraculous, but we are already seeing miracles of art being created with Midjourney and Dall E. So I don't see why similar miracles can't be accomplished in the realms of music and film too. Part three, Grimes responds. In a response to Fake Drake, the artist Grimes recently announced a new beta AI software that will allow anyone to recreate her voice. She welcomes any AI creator to use her voice 
and commercially release the results in exchange for half of any master recording royalties. This, in my opinion, is what I think all artists, labels, and publishing companies should be doing, allowing everyone to create and allow everyone to earn money. Now, there's the caveat that Grimes did ask users to be tasteful and said she would block extreme users, such as if, say, you composed an AI Grimes Nazi anthem. And this is how it should be, because no one should be able to use someone else's likeness, voice, image, or identity without consent by that person for anything. But that doesn't mean there won't be people who don't try this without consent and with dishonorable intentions. And this is where we're going to get into the dark side of this topic. So what is the downside? Right now, there is a convincingly real AI photo of the Pope decked out in swag that is circulating on the internet. It has been released with a disclaimer that it is a deep fake. But what if it was released without that disclaimer? There would certainly be plenty of people who would assume it was real. And even after it was revealed to be otherwise, there would still be those who would continue to insist that it was real. Why? Because it supports a belief or narrative about the Pope or the Catholic Church that they're invested in. Let me delve into this topic a little further. Six years ago, the movie Rogue One, a Star Wars story, was released in theaters, and it featured a CGI deepfake recreation of deceased actor Peter Cushing as the character Moff Tarkin. At the time, the internet commented on how creepily uncanny valley it looked. But to me, the scariest thing about it was knowing just how much this technology was going to improve as the years went by, and the potential harm for misuse and misinformation that could be had by creating deepfakes of anyone. I made a video about this back when that film first came out. And in that video, I discussed how I was regularly seeing people spread false information on Facebook through memes that were false, had false information, and seeing just how quick people were willing to accept what they were reading was real accepting it without even bothering to question it or do any kind of real fact-checking on it. This meme about the Obama administration requiring everyone to have a chip implanted in them was 100% false, but people reacted without thinking and assumed it was real because part of their belief system needed it to be real. And even after seeing it exposed as a fake, there were still a lot of people who took the attitude of, well, I wouldn't be too sure. It wouldn't surprise me if it turned out to be real after all. This is because people sometimes get very invested in political and ideological narratives. So much so that we can become quick to believe false information if it supports our belief system. Now these memes were just plain text. So imagine the potential for misinformation when pretty much anyone can create realistic, deep fake photos and probably in time video too. How will governments and societies deal with this potential? How will we police it? I would like to think that we could all just police ourselves. Like that old adage, don't believe everything you hear and believe only half of what you see. But my own experience as part of the boomer generation on Facebook has shown me that people will believe almost anything if it appeals to their belief system. The potential to mislead and harm is huge. Update. While editing this video, the news just broke that Florida governor and avowed Disney fan, Ron DeSantis, posted an AI-created deepfake image of one of his political opponents on Twitter. No surprise to me that this practice is already being adopted and that it's being adopted by a politician. AI is already in its early stages and already the ability for anyone to fake or infer what someone else reportedly said or did and do it convincingly is here. And it's just going to keep getting easier and easier to do. 
we either have to start getting really savvy or we are doomed. So what happens next? Will AI allow us to all become great artists, composers, and filmmakers? And what does any of this have to do with Star Trek? Yes, oddly enough, all of this got me thinking about Star Trek. That's because most things get me thinking about Star Trek. Yeah, I know, but hear me out on this. Have you ever noticed how in original Trek and in the original Trek spinoff shows, there is hardly ever a mention of any kind of popular culture. The only mention of music on the series was to the classics, Beethoven, Bach, etc. The same held true for theater and literature, and mostly that involves Shakespeare. I would sometimes wonder why there was no popular culture in Star Trek. Weren't there any current dramas that people followed or movies that people watched? Realistically, I always thought the reason was probably because the writers didn't want to venture to guess what popular culture might be like in the 22nd or 23rd century. But I always enjoyed entertaining the notion that it was because by the 22nd century, popular culture, as we understood it, ceased to be relevant. For instance, in the culture I grew up in, only a select few get to take part in the creation of the arts. And an even smaller percentage of those that do were actually elevated to worldwide fame because of it. So I would think to myself that perhaps in the age of Star Trek, everybody takes part in the creation of music, literature, and theater. And the reason for this is because something democratized the ability to create it. In regards to Star Trek, I always assumed that it would be because everyone would learn music, art, literature, poetry, etc., right alongside other studies like math and science. But given our current trajectory, it might appear that AI as a quick shot to art creation will become the default method. In the same way that recording software like Logic Pro and Pro Tools democratized who can record music, and companies like CD Baby democratized who can release music worldwide, AI will start to democratize who can create art, literature, and even film. And if everybody can do it, it stops being considered as special by the culture because there's just too much of it. But what do you think? Will we live in a world where anyone has the ability to create AI music and perhaps even create an AI persona that releases said music? Could it completely change how we view and value popular culture in this world? Could there be a backlash where in only organic music and art created by human beings will be valued? And as technology improves, how in the world are we gonna be able to tell the difference? And even if all this comes to pass, there might still be a niche appreciation for music performed by real human beings, or at least I hope there will be. I can always continue to be hopeful that hard work and dedication towards an artistic skill, such as art or music, will still be appreciated by a society hundreds of years from now. But who knows? The genie is out of the bottle, and nothing will ever be the same. But then, when has it ever been? This is TJR. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours. Please leave a comment. If you like the videos I create here, please hit like, hit subscribe, or hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. If you'd like to have access to exclusive content not available here on the channel, please consider becoming a patron supporter and go to patreon.com forward slash TJR the original. If you can't do that, I understand. You can always make a one-time donation by hitting the super thanks button or you can just show your support by clicking like and sharing these videos with anyone you think might be interested. Mostly, I want to thank you for stopping by, spending some time here. It means a lot. I hope you all stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.